Hey guys, it's Peter Day here. How's it going? Welcome back to the channel and this video. I'm out in the woods today, just doing some mountain biking. Um, for me, I love mountain biking and I got into it about uh, two years ago. We moved up to New Hampshire and a friend convinced me to get a mountain bike because he thought it would be fun. And um, ever since I've just been loving the thing. Um, I'm out here on the trails. This is my bike right there. So this is a Yeti. SB 130 bike. This is the trail I'm doing this morning, but I wanted to make this video um, because I have a few things on my mind. I actually, this video is kind of impromptu, but um, we, we're starting to do more of these videos. You know why? Because I went to a conference recently where there was a lot of affiliates and uh, I'm just trying to catch my breath. Give me a sec. I think I went up the trail the wrong way. I think it's what happened. I think you're supposed to go down the trail. See, it's kind of down, and then you go you go down here. I think I've just been doing it the wrong way because I came up the thing, and it's like working my way up, so just a little out of breath. But anyway, I was at a conference recently, and it was an affiliate mastermind, and I ran into multiple aff affiliates whose lives have really been changed by our content um some of these guys i had no idea who they even were and um i told the story in one of the last videos but i ran into a guy and he told me a story how he watched one of our videos online one of these podcasts he just got a few tips and he went from not earning anything to having like a 10 million dollar a year business and he says that um this year he's on track um to do like 30 million dollars so and he's not the only one i i've just kept when when i've gotten more out and about in the um the space conferences live events i just i've kept running into these people whose just entire businesses and lives have been changed by um this type of content so um that inspires me just to be doing more of it i mean if you notice i was only making a video like every quarter or like every three months but i've been making them more frequently because uh if they're providing a lot of value um we might as well just keep it up so this video is going to be talking about the failures because the failures have been uh, something that's been real. And I, I think it's good not to sugarcoat it. So um, the topic of this video is basically, you know, 80 to 90 percent of everything has failed. And then what to do about it. So I don't know about you, but how many campaigns have not worked? Right. And when you start to think about it, you start to actually agree that, you know, it's not it's not like 10% have been failing or it's not like 5% have been failing. If you think back on it, it's like 90% or, or more or less or a little less have actually been failing. I mean, think about it. So let's say you're running, let's just say you're running debt relief, okay? How many offers have worked for debt relief and how many have failed? And, you know, you're probably thinking to yourself, yeah, okay, yeah, you, you probably have like one or two winning debt relief offers. And then in order to find those two winning offers, you, there was like 15 that didn't work, right? So right there, what is that? That's that's an 85% failure rate right there, right? And the reason I'm making this video is because we tested an offer last night that we were excited about and it failed. I mean, it just, uh, it didn't get any leads and it was something that we were kind of excited about. So what I want to do in this video is spend a little bit of time just training on this topic because if you're not mentally prepared for the potential failure rate, I'm not saying it's guaranteed, I'm not saying you're going to go out there and you're going to fail 90% of the time, but here's the thing, if you have the right mindset about it, you'll be able to um, just accommodate growth better. So here, here's the mistake. The mistake is to be not understanding this, or the mistake is to be kind of brushing this under the um, the rug and say, oh, you know, yeah, hopefully this offer works. Hopefully this one doesn't work. You have to be more mathematical about it. So let, let's just pretend, let's just pretend that 80% of every offer that you're going to test, let's just pretend 80% is going to fail. And let's just pretend that's the case, and which it could be. Um, what we're trying to do in our business is try to figure out how to actually get this number big, like better, you know, it's like, you know, if we can figure out how to get only half to fail instead of 80% or something, that would be a big increase, um, in our profits and stuff. But the reality is, is in the affiliate marketing industry, if you think back on it, if I think back on it, it, it has been like 80 to 90% of absolutely everything we've tested has failed. So what does that mean for growing a business? It means you have to not be pushing that under 
the carpet it means you have to kind of dig into it a little bit so let's say that that that's the failure rate so what you need to start thinking about now in your business is like okay so if if only one or two is going to work out of like 10 to 15 things that i test it, it gets you thinking that you're probably not testing enough off the bat right so i can tell you with um you know, even some of our media buyers on our team right now, it's like, are they really thinking 80-20 um, in terms of, right? So when, once you start really thinking about it that way, it's like, okay, well, hold on. If I test 10 creatives and only one of them might work, it's like, well, then in order to get two of them to work, I got to test 20 ads. And then to get three to really take off, I need to test 30 ads. And then... You know, I'm, again, I'm not saying that's the case, but it's, it's actually helpful to start thinking this way because then what happens is you start, you you get in like this more hyper growth mindset and you start thinking as a media buyer or an affiliate marketer or publisher, whatever you do, it, you start thinking like, okay, like I'm not nearly doing as much as I need to be doing. Like, let's just think, let's just think about offers. Like, let's say your goal is to get, you know, a million dollar offer this year like you want to just find some new offer that does a million bucks okay that's your goal all right so you might have to tend you might have to test 10 or 15 offers to find a couple that work and then out of the ones that work you're probably going to have to like have i don't know like five to ten at least maybe that work to then find one that's like a million dollar one so then so then you start doing the math it's like okay okay so your goal is to find this million dollar offer and you're going to have to test 10 or 15 offers to find one or two that actually work in the first place. You know, whether it makes a million dollars or not, I don't know, but it's like you might have to test 10 or 15 offers to even get anything um, to work. And then once you find a handful that work, then maybe out of those handful, you'll get one that does over seven figures. And then when you start reverse engineering the thinking, um, you start to realize like, okay, in order to actually land a million dollar offer, you might have to test like 40 offers or something or third right and then and then what but this is very helpful and it's for me i think there's a big difference between just being pessimistic and you know realistic um and again the the goal is not to be going out there and having like 90 percent of everything fail but i've been doing this for 10 years and 90 percent of everything i've tested has failed so I mean, there's a little bit of writing on the wall that there might be some kind of truth or at least pattern in what I've been seeing. So anyway, all I'm saying is that what you need to start doing in your business is that let's just say the ratio is one out of eight. Let's just say one out of every eight things you try, offers you succeed, offers you do succeed. Let's just say the ratio is one out of eight. What you need to start doing in your business is you suddenly have to start doing eight times more than you would normally do. Like, let's say you want eight, eight winning offers. Okay. Okay. Well, what, what did I say the ratio was? I said maybe it's, um, you know, one out of eight. So if you want eight winning offers, um, what's, what's eight times eight? It's like a really big, big number. It's like, I'm not doing the mental math right, but it's like 50, 60. It's like you might have to test like 60, um, 64, whatever it is. You might have to test like 64 um, offers to find eight ones. And then let's say let's say your goal is to build your, your media buying team um, – you know, eight times bigger. Well, do you know how many media buyers you might have to interview or vet or test out or something to build your media buying team eight times bigger? You might have to interview 80 media buyers or 50 to find those gems to make your team eight times bigger. So it's once you start thinking along these lines, what you realize is you're not nearly doing enough. You're not, you're not testing eight times, right? So, and just think about this in every single aspect. Let's say you're running Facebook ads. And let's just say you want to find 10 winning ads, okay? Let's say you're promoting some health insurance or whatever, right? And you, you want to find 10 winning ads. Are you going to find those 10 winning ads testing 20? Probably not. Not with that ratio. With this 1 out of 8 ratio, you might have to test 80 creatives, 80 ad copies, 80 winning ads to find 10 that work, 1, at, one out of 8. So... And then, so now you're suddenly thinking like, oh my goodness, Peter is kind of like, you know, stirring me up a little bit here. I'm not nearly doing as much as I need to do. Like I'm not testing 80 ads and I, um, 
my goodness, you, you may be thinking to yourself, I really only have one or two media buyers. I don't even have a media buyer. Okay, so let's think about this. If you don't have a media buyer on your team helping you run your ads, what do you have to do to get a media buyer? Well, you're going to probably have to interview and talk to at least eight people. And maybe out of those eight, you'll get one out of eight to become your media buyer and be a superstar. So what this thinking does is it provokes you to start thinking on a little bit of a wider scale. So let's just use, for example, this offer that I tested last night. It's like, so this offer wasn't very good. So what does this mean? Well, it means that I need to go test maybe at least seven more of these similar type of offers. And then maybe out of those seven, I'll find one or two more gems. And then you you work the game like that. I think a lot of affiliates um, quit or fail because they don't allow the numbers to play their course. I mean, if you think about it, there's so many affiliates that have just given up on the industry after one or two attempts or one or two verticals or one or two offers. Well, if you just think about it mathematically, it's almost expected, right? If, if one out of eight of everything you do is gonna be a winner and then seven out of eight, um, let's just say, are failures, if an affiliate only tests like two or three verticals and then quits the industry, it's almost like, it's not like, it's not like gambling, but it's, it's not letting the, the, it's just not letting the probability take, take its course, right? That's the best description of it. So what you have to do is you have to think eight times bigger, at least eight times bigger. If you want to have five winning campaigns or five winning verticals, you really should be seeking after 40, okay? And then, you know what the good news is? The good news is that maybe my one out of eight it is very likely, a, you know, a little pessimistic and also conservative. So the good news is, let's just say you're thinking to yourself, one out of eight is going to work out. You want to get these um, new verticals going. Okay, let's say you actually do take this plan of action. Let's say you start testing out 40 different verticals where, wherever you even find these 40 verticals i mean full transparency i think in our business we only have like you know 10 to 15 verticals going right now because it's just you have to start really thinking outside of the box to even come up with 40 different sectors of the market to promote um it's not impossible but it's not necessarily in front of your fingertips either as a normal affiliate but you start thinking these these greater numbers and you start thinking this greater effort and then the good news is that these numbers are obviously they, they are conservative they're probably a little bit you know pessimistic when it comes to the one out of eight but just think about what's going to happen to your business let's say your goal is to find five more winning verticals for your business and you're like okay well peter says maybe one out of eight is going to work out so in order to find five winning verticals you're going to start really going on this testing mode and you're going to test out 40 different verticals you know maybe you're going to test out your weight loss your your fitness i mean there's so many verticals we haven't even tapped into in this industry we've been doing a lot of just lead generation things there's finance verticals um a vertical that i'm bullish about that we're just doing absolutely nothing in is just biz op i mean we could be doing all kinds of business opportunities and the um promoting different people's info products there's just so much you could do in this industry but when you start thinking more numerically and think think more like measuring you want to be measuring your business right and you don't you don't want to be shooting in the dark you don't want to be like oh my goodness i tested four things it didn't work out it's so hard what i would say if you tested four things is that you didn't test you didn't test enough you probably had to at least t test eight or ten things to find at least one winner so if you tested four things it's you know maybe you needed to test four more to find that breakthrough but it starts to get you thinking outside the box and here's what's very likely going to happen what's very likely going to happen is if you think this way you end up go you're probably going to overshoot your goals like i said if your goal is to find just five new verticals in your business and you apply this potential principle of like one out of eight working well what that means is you have to be out in the marketplace testing 40 verticals and here's what's going to happen if you actually go out there and you're testing seeking after and trying to figure out 40 verticals if i were to guess you're going to get much more than eight of them to succeed i mean if i were to personally do that which i probably should i mean what's funny about these videos is sometimes these videos they pump myself up to to think bigger and stuff too right but it's like if i actually go out there and i say to my team okay team 
we're gonna we're gonna find like 40 different verticals and we're gonna really give these things a shot i mean if i were to truly do that we would probably have at least seven at least seven new verticals that are winning and then you've got to think well how big can a vertical be i mean a vertical could be over 100 grand a day for a, for a single vertical category of traffic easily so you run the numbers there and right there there's a formula for over 700 grand a day right seven verticals over 100 grand a day of vertical um so here's what i want you guys to do as a plan of action so the plan of action is to start thinking eight times bigger, eight times everything. If you're if you're testing lead gen offers, you have to start testing eight times more of them. If you're running Facebook ads, you got to be doing eight times more creatives. Let's say you're a copywriter. Let's say you're writing copy for Facebook ads. You got to spend that extra time. You got to do eight times more copy. What does that mean um, logistically? Well, it means that maybe you need to spend your Sunday night. Like you know, maybe you need to make some adjustments. Maybe you you used to take the weekends off and you only ran your ads Monday to Friday. Well, you know, you got to find the time to do eight times more production. So maybe what this means is you have to start, um, you know, writing ad copy on your Sunday night or your Saturday morning. You got to squeeze in those extra times, right, to actually get eight times more production. You might have to hire, you might have to interview, you know, 20 people to find what, two or three gems on your team, one out of eight, whatever it is. So it my my action steps for you guys is to start doing everything eight times more, okay? But here's what's important. What's important is to not get spread too thin either. So it's a fine line. It's this fine line between thinking bigger, doing eight times more or greater, but then it's this fine line of not abandoning what's working. So what I've been telling my my team, whether it's a salesperson or a media buyer, what I've been telling my team is, listen, even though we have these goals of all these new verticals, all these new offers and sectors and this and that, what I've been telling my team is you still have to focus 80% on what's been working, okay? Because if this gets out of whack, then you could find yourself so focused on speculative things and on new things that you're not growing um, things in your business that are working. So even though I'm saying all of this stuff about eight times greater thinking, eight times more ad copy, eight if you're running YouTube videos, you have to start testing eight times more videos. And it's not just about the number eight, it's still quality, quality matters. It's not about, it's not about, you know, staying up until two in the morning and just forcing yourself to do eight times more. That is not just about the number, it's you have to also maintain quality of the content. So let's say you're a let's say you're on YouTube running debt relief. Let's just say. I don't even know if debt relief is really allowed on YouTube, but it was maybe a bad example. But let's just say that's the case, okay? Or Facebook. Okay. So let's say you you really want to start doing eight more videos. It's it's not just about actually sitting down and busting out eight more. It's it's about okay, can I, it's, it's about the creativity. You got to, you got to somehow figure out, well, how can I start producing like eight times the amount of content, but actually maintain, um, the same quality of these videos. Right. And then that presents a whole nother challenge. It's not, it's not just about doing eight times more stuff on paper. It's about doing eight times the amount of production. That's as good, if not better as the production you've been doing on a smaller scale. So now it has you think, okay, well, Peter's saying to do eight more videos, and then you're thinking to myself, well, if I try to force myself to do like eight times the amount of video ads, I think it's just going to get sloppy and my ad copy is just going to deteriorate. I'm just going to be pulling stuff out of my butt at that point to even like, right? So, but then it gets you thinking, well, okay, well, how can I do this? It's like, okay, so then maybe you have to hire a copywriter. So now it starts to, okay, well now, okay. So now let's say you're making four videos and coming up with four ad copies and then your copywriter is coming up with four. And guess what? The copywriter is not going to get sloppy. The copywriter is not going to be pulling stuff out of their butt. Why? Because they're not trying to do 64 videos a week. Maybe they're just hired to literally write like these four additional videos for you um, or maybe eight additional a week. And then all of a sudden you start to see like, okay, wow, I can actually produce eight times the amount of content, eight times the amount of testing, and eight times the amount of ads. I can suddenly do it without without the creativity and without the actual quality of what I'm doing deteriorating, right? So, um, and I have to say with verticals though, it's, 
I, I want to stress this though. A big, I think a mistake would be to be so focused on this grand vision of these new things that you're just sacrificing what's working. Again, what I've been stressing over and over and over with my sales team is listen, we want to be focusing 80% of our efforts on the verticals that are actually making us money right now. Scaling, plug and play verticals that we're good at, that we really have nailed down for quality and scale and success. But then what we want to be doing with 20% of our time perhaps is be looking into these new verticals, the fitness, the weight loss, the financial services, the home services, the this or the that, that we're not currently um, doing, right? And what this balance is going to allow us to do is it's going to allow us to scale our winners, you know, ride our stallions, whatever the analogy is, right? But then what it's going to allow us to do is be still focused on getting new stallions, new winners, without just being spread too thin. So guys, I hope this video gave you good um, training and good content. I'm personally going to send this video to our media buyers on um, my team because I think that it will inspire them a lot. And again, we all just need to be testing a lot more. We need to be testing a lot more. Um, we need to be thinking a lot bigger, but we need to be careful that testing more doesn't just become a numbers game. It's not about just making 64 video ads or 64 ad copies a week or whatever it is. It's not, it's, that's not the point. The point is, can you somehow produce those numbers, but keep the quality and the creativity the same, if not better than it was when you were only producing 10 or 15 ads or pieces of content per week. So that that's the advice there is to be allowing these numbers to play out, allowing the probabilities to play out. But at the very same time, let's not allow the quality of the work, the quality of the ad copies, the quality of everything. Let's not allow those things to um, deteriorate. Otherwise, you might actually find yourself in worse of a situation than if you were to only do four or eight extremely quality ads or videos a week, right? So this is Peter. I'm going to check out for now, but hope you have a great week and um, look out for another piece of content soon. Talk soon. Bye.